I've scoured the internet to find the best upgrades and mods for the Bamboo Labs 3D printers. Today we'll give this dusty old stock P1P an extreme makeover with a handful of custom upgrade parts. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. More on that later. First up, we're going to put the enclosure kit from Bamboo Labs on this thing, and all the mods in today's video will be linked in the description. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time covering the enclosure, but I did want to do some testing specifically on energy consumption. So for this, I'll print a model in ASA, which is a challenging material to print and requires a bed temperature of 100 degrees. Here are the results from the unenclosed printer. Heat up time was about 8 minutes, and power draw for the entire print was 0.333 kilowatt hours. Okay, let's put this enclosure kit on. This took me a little longer than I expected, but the result is a pretty sleek looking 3D printer. Now we can test energy consumption with an enclosure. And here's the results. Heat up time was again 8 minutes. Power draw for the entire print was 0.278 kilowatt hours. I was surprised that the heat up time remained the same, but it took 17% less energy to keep the bed heated up once all the thermal energy saturated the print bed. Using the Hikmicro E02 thermal imager, we can also see a much more even heat distribution all the way to the edges of the bed. As for the print quality, you can see there's way less vertical banding on the enclosure print thanks to a stable ambient temperature. Okay, with the enclosure out of the way, we can move on to some lighting modifications. Of course, I'm going to add some RGB lighting to the underside of the top cover. There's tons of models to do this, but I opted for this pretty simple one from user Dracosha on Maker World. It prints in four keyed parts that slot together and I printed this in transparent PET G with no infill to hopefully have a little bit of RGB light bleed through. This just lifts the top cover up a bit and gives a nice bevel to install some LED strips inside the chamber. While we're putting lights in here let's throw this magnetic light from Big Tree Tech in here too. This is the Panda Lux, and they make it for the P1 and X1 series machines as well as the A1. This one comes with a small PCB that splits the original chamber light's power into multiple headers so we can keep the old light hooked up for some extra lighting. More light in the chamber is going to have a huge effect on the image quality of the built-in camera that Bamboo Lab supplies. These cameras have horrible low light performance, so upping the amount of lumens in here is going to give you much crisper time lapse footage. One glaring issue on the P1P and P1S is the screen. It lacks a lot of stats that are useful when printing, and if your print pauses for some type of error, there's usually no on screen prompt to let you know what went wrong or how to fix it. That's where this screen, the Panda Touch, comes in. It runs off the USB port right behind the stock screen and comes with a magnetic mount. It also has a built-in battery so you can keep it on your desk during printing to monitor your machine. And you can also link up more than one printer, so this might be a good one to look at if you have a small print farm. I'm not a huge fan of the mount it ships with and I found a great alternative on Maker World from user Mizanik. Here's the new screen mount. We just need to screw on the magnetic backplate for the screen, and then we can install it. Okay, let's move on to some of the extruder mods I have here. First, we have the Panda Extruder Housing and the Panda Claw Extruder Idler. Both are CNC'd out of aluminum, brass, and hardened tool steel. This will cut down on some of the weight in the extruder assembly and also increase cooling and wear resistance. Plus, they look super cool with this blue anodized aluminum finish.
This video is brought to you by PCBWay. With industry-leading rapid prototyping solutions, PCBWay can have a part headed to your doorstep within days. Whether you're looking for circuit boards, machined parts, or even 3D prints in stainless steel, PCBWay has everything you need to make your next project a successful one. Their website makes it super simple to order parts. Just drag your PCB designs or 3D model into your browser and choose every detail you need to make sure it meets and exceeds your expectations. Head over to the link in the description to learn more and help support the people who support this channel. Next, we have this E3D Panda Revo hotend to put on here too. This is an official collaboration between BQ or Big Tree Tech and E3D, and it's a drop in replacement using the same mounting hardware. This allows you to unscrew your nozzle and perform a nozzle swap in under 30 seconds. The Revo line of hot ends from E3D have some really cool nozzle options, including some high flow rate nozzles that can push your volumetric flow rate up to 40 cubic millimeters per second. Now that we have all these cool looking parts in the print head assembly, it'd be nice if we could see them. That's where this Panda Jetpack comes in. It's a lightweight skeletonized front cover with the Panda Jet Fan Duct already installed. If you're looking for a low cost upgrade, you can buy just the duct alone for better cooling. It splits the air from the part cooling fan and redirects it into four even streams around the nozzle. These are printed in nylon with great strength and heat resistance, and they'll shed just a little bit of weight off your print head assembly. To install it, we just have to switch the part cooling fan over, and it magnetizes to the print head assembly just like the stock one. Big Tree Tech also makes these different colored polycarbonate doors, so let's throw one of those on. These are drop-in replacements for the P1S and X1 series machines and just add a little bit of flair to your printer. Okay, let's install a bunch of the printed mods I have here. First up is this side-mounted spool holder. This moves the filament to the left side of the machine so it's less of a hassle to change filament while it's tucked away on a shelf. It uses two skateboard bearings and has a nice little filament guide here. Pro tip, you can use a Phillips bit to flare out the end of your Bowden tubes, making it easier to load filament. I also printed this Y splitter that uses compression fittings so you don't have to disconnect your AMS to run an external spool. Of course, we need a poop chute and I found a nice little magnetic one. Super easy to remove and discard the waste, and I printed it in clear PETG so I can see when it's starting to fill up. Here's how the back of the machine looks with all these printed mods. Our final mod for today is gonna to be some new print beds. They all have their strengths and weaknesses, so let's go over them. First, we have these pattern build plates. Bamboo Lab sells a few of these and so does Big Tree Tech and they work the same. They have microscopic grooves imprinted on the bed that reflect light in a certain pattern. When your first layer is smushed into these grooves, the light reflecting pattern is transferred to your first layer. These are great for designs that print face down, but I'd only recommend them for PLA as bed adhesion here isn't as great as some of our other options. Speaking of bed adhesion, we have these cryo grip plates from Big Tree Tech. These need less temperature on the build plate to achieve the same grip strength as a standard PEI coated bed. If energy consumption is a concern, this might be one to pick up. Honestly though, nothing beats a textured PEI plate. They hold well at the right temperature and auto release your print once they cool down. They're also extremely durable and support printing of most materials. 
That's all for today. Let me know what upgrades you've done or plan to do to your Bamboo Labs printer. And as always, thanks for watching and happy printing.